I'm Alex Michelson. This week on The Issue Is, Tulsi Gabbard is here. How she went from a Democratic presidential candidate to potentially Trump's vice president. Then, Jane Fonda and Arnold Schwarzenegger teaming up to regulate oil drilling in California. We talk with both. And President Biden calls it a national model. How you can sign up to be a California Service Corps member. The Issue Is starts right now. Broadcasting across California, you're watching The Issue Is. And welcome to The Issue Is. With us this week on set, it's great to have Tulsi Gabbard here. Of course, she is a four-term Democratic congressperson from Hawaii, a combat veteran currently serving as a lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Army Reserve. In 2019, she visited us, us on set while she was running for the Democratic nomination for president. Now she's here to talk about her new book, available for pre-order now. It's called For Love of Country, Leave the Democrat Party Behind. She's here in L.A. for a weekend speech to the Los Angeles GOP featuring our pal Steve Hilton. Tulsi Gabbard, welcome back to The Good Issue to Is. to be back. It's been a minute since uh, I saw you. Just a few things have changed <laughs> in uh, your worldview a I little feel bit like, since well, then. I, I, the world has changed. Yes. The, the politics in our country has changed dramatically, I would say, since... I saw you probably last in early 2020 or late 2019, yeah, yep, yep, I think. Yep. So, well, let's talk about that. So yeah. the book, which we see right here, is called uh, For Love of Country, Leave the Democrat Party Behind. Why did you become a Democrat in the first place? Yes. And why the decision to leave it behind? I was 21 years old in Hawaii, thinking about how I could best uh, serve my community. I was very motivated by a, a desire to protect our home. Hawaii is a beautiful place. Went and pulled the Office of Election paperwork and saw that I had to choose a party. And unlike some people, I didn't come from a family where it's like, okay, we're generation long Democrats or generations long Republicans. And um, so I really, I really thought through well, what, what actually makes sense for me. Mm -hmm. And at that time, this is obviously over 20 years ago, um, especially in Hawaii, the Democratic Party has had a legacy of being the party of working people, uh, being a welcoming big tent party that, that really sincerely brought people together with different ideas, different views on different things, different religions, different backgrounds, uh, and, and stood for free speech, stood for civil liberties stood for these fundamental, truly American principles. And that, that's what drew me to, to the Democratic Party and why I joined the Democratic Party. I had decided in late 2022 to, to leave the Democratic Party. I became increasingly frustrated with the fact that where the Democratic Party is in Washington, especially, is, is a party of the elite. Uh, they are a party that is actively trying to censor free speech. When there are people who are saying things that they don't like, challenging their authority, asking questions they don't want asked, either directly or indirectly through big tech. We've seen increasingly more and more evidence showing that in the name of disinformation or misinformation or hate speech or offensive speech, um, unfortunately, the Democrat Party has become one saying, well, free speech is not absolute. And if we deem your speech to be offensive, then you shouldn't be allowed to speak. And, and for me, both as an American, uh, as someone who's proudly served our country as a soldier for over 20 years in the Army Reserve, um, that, that's a huge problem, to put it lightly. So you've gotten a lot of attention recently uh, because uh, you've said that if Donald Trump asked you to be vice president, you would serve, right? I would. Uh, how is that going? Are, are you in, in communications for that? Or is he <laughs> vetting you for that? Can you, can I, I honestly, I, I don't have any insight into the inner workings of, of their campaign. Uh, I, I hear a lot of chatter, but frankly, I'm, I'm really very focused on what I'm doing, which is spending my time uh, sounding the alarm bells across the country, speaking to different groups and people and on as many platforms as possible, really to to reveal the truth or to remind people or show them what is happening in our country. So, ha I mean, have you talked to him specifically about this idea of being I, I've, I have met and talked to him before, but no, I have not. Uh, not on this topic. Okay. Um, there's somebody else who some people have tied you to, which is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He's going to be announcing his VP pick on Tuesday. Is there any chance you're there for that? I will be visiting the border on Tuesday. <laughs> so uh, one of the many serious problems yeah. and issues that we're facing, uh, specifically the border here in California, an issue that unfortunately is not getting enough attention. A lot, a lot of times in, in you know the national cable news, 
Uh, they focus on what's going on in Texas, focus on what's going on uh, in places like Arizona and others, which is important. But I think one of the things, and, and you know this uh, probably better than most, is one of the things that's different about the border here in California is just how, how, can, how much smaller it is yeah. than the border in Texas. But really the result of that is people who come in across the border here illegally are able to disappear into a neighborhood within minutes. We've seen a big influx in at the California side of the border. So, okay, yes. it's fair to say based off of that, you're not going to be RFK Jr.'s vice president. We'll see what he announces. Uh, okay. Uh, there are a lot of Democrats who feel like, okay, we're frustrated with the party, but then they look at January 6th and Donald Trump, uh, and they feel like he continues to lie about an election that he lost, they feel. They feel that, um, and they look at the criminal indictments against him uh, for, you know, basically trying to overturn the election or mishandling uh, classified intelligence. Does that worry you at all? Are you concerned about any of that? What I see is um, when I talk about this abuse of power by the Democrat elite, and I've, I've talked about this extensively, uh, is, is part of what we should be, as Americans, alarmed about. Um, what, what are we at, 92, 97 felony counts? I've lost track of exactly how many there are between the federal uh, government and different state governments. We're seeing a politicization of our Department of Justice and law enforcement in different levels uh, in a way that's never actually been seen before in our country, where the, the party and president in power is directly going after and targeting the, the candidate that poses the greatest threat to their power and the greatest threat to their but you re-election. But you're not worried at all about the merits of what the, why those indictments uh, I'm, are. I'm not going to go into the, there are so many different allegations yeah. and accusations that are going to, but, you know, this thing in New York, the real estate one, for right. example, I mean, it, it just, it, from the very beginning, the, the, the political bias uh, and targeting coming from people who have run their whole campaigns on going out and getting Donald Trump and then finding a way or creating a way for them to do it, uh, again, the, these are things that are being done in an unprecedented way. What I think voters really need to focus on, and they can make their minds up for themselves about all of these different issues, is when we look at the danger of, of what the Democratic Party in power are doing and the lengths they are willing to go to try to destroy their major political opponent and the fact that even as some of these lawsuits are not going in the direction that they had hoped they would or the courts are not ruling in the way that the Democrats had hoped they would, you have powerful people in the Democratic Party saying basically, aw shucks, I guess we're going to have to rely on the American people and voters to quote unquote save our democracy. And that to me, when they talk about uh, you know, saving our democracy, which is so many of these things are being done. Well, we've got to save our democracy because President Trump is going to destroy it. He'll be a dictator. All mm -hmm. these different things that they're saying, the way that they are doing this, instead of just trusting the American people to exercise their own discernment, look at all these lawsuits. Look at the charges that are being, yeah. that are being levied. Compare and contrast President Biden's record versus President Trump's record. Trust our democracy to work as our founders intended and let voters make the decision about what kind of future we want for our country. And that, that is the most important thing and that for, voters need to focus on. And for you, on. that choice is Trump over Biden. I'm, yeah. I'm traveling across the country telling yeah. people, put our country, our democracy, and our freedom first and make that decision for yourselves. And for you, that's Trump. For me, this is, this is uh, not allowing the Democrats to continue to abuse their power. Uh, real quickly, two quick things that are fun to wrap things up. Yeah. Um, I know you're a big workout person. Yeah, I try. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to see some of the videos of you doing uh, CrossFit, in, including here. How do you think the country should think about exercise and physical fitness differently? Because we do have a chronic disease problem, we and we've got an obesity problem in this country. You know, we talk about our health care system and health care reform and, and all of these different things. But really, when you look at it, our system is set up around uh, pre pre prescribing drugs to treat a symptom rather than actually going to the cause and encouraging people just to try to live a healthier lifestyle. It means thinking about what kind of food you're eating, drinking water, getting some exercise. And that may mean for some people, hey, go for a 30 minute walk every day. For other people, it might mean going to, to a CrossFit gym or, or whatever it is in between. 
um, life is short and we want to be able to spend our time with those that we love and in good health. And in, that includes spending time with family. And yes. so we always like to end things with music here. So we're going to end with your music. This is you and your parents singing Amazing Grace. Oh, wow. <laughs> Which is really great. <laughs> Tulsi Gabbard, thanks Amazing for being Amazing here. Grace, the sound. Up next, Jane Fonda and Arnold Schwarzenegger working with Gavin Newsom to take on California's oil industry. We talk to all of them when we come back. Governor, what's, what's the bottom line message to California voters on this? I mean, I just don't be fooled by the misinformation and disinformation coming from the oil companies. They've been playing us for fools for decades and decades. This week, a rare double governor appearance. Newsom and Schwarzenegger teaming up to protect California's SB 1137, along with actress Jane Fonda. That law, signed by Newsom, would maintain a 3,200-foot buffer zone between neighborhoods and new oil wells. We caught up with Jane Fonda and later Schwarzenegger. Why was it so important for you to be out here? What's your main message? The message is that two years ago, Governor Newsom, Gavin Newsom, signed a bill, Senate Bill 1137, that created the largest setback in the country. That, that, that means no oil wells within 3,200 feet. The, the oil wells that are already there, clean them up, less pollution, help the people. Historic. And then the oil companies are trying to overturn it. Mm. And we're fighting to keep the law. And that's why we're here. And that's why it's so important that we have Arnold Schwarzenegger, a Republican governor, standing next to, and there he is. Come here. <laughs> I am so proud to stand next to this man. <laughs> but you see how she bosses me around? <laughs> that was always like I know, that. I know. I've always, always been able to boss him around. Ever since I came to this country, Jane Fonda has been bossing me around. I know. I love yeah. it. I mean, can I you believe it. that? It's, it's because like a, you love to be bossed around. Well, you know? he, why not? <laughs> I mean, especially with smart women. <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, when she calls, you have to come, right? That's like in two seconds. Yeah. In two seconds. But anyway, the important thing here is what most people don't know and what you don't know yet because I never told you that, that we don't only have this in common and the movie business in common, but the fitness explosion mm. in the 70s has happened because she came in and started creating these fitness videos mm -hmm. and had a show and inspired the women. See, I was always trying to inspire the men but there's only half of the population. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, those two things together, one and one became three. Mm. It was a huge explosion, and that's what started the whole fitness uh, you know, phenomenon in the 70s and 80s. So why are you here now? <laughs> no, no, I'm just, as I said, this is one thing we've in common. But the, the other thing is, of course, the environment. <laughs> we have been fighting for a clean environment, and I think the day is basically to just say, to the oil companies, look, we don't want you to stop drilling because we need oil, but we want you to drill safely. Mm -hmm. And you gotta go and consider people's health. We know that by, through pollution, seven million people die every year worldwide. So I mean, that's a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So we can do better than that. And they can do much better than that. And so, the, of course, the, the lawmakers in California and the governor, I mean, they have put together this great law that says, you know, you cannot drill within 3,200 feet of a housing project or a hospital or a park or a school. And they want to undo that law with a proposition that would be on a ballot. But of course, this is kind of like a, a sequel. Because we have gone through this once before. You've done it. In 2010, yeah. right. they, put a, they tried to put a, 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 an initiative together that says, let's undo all the environmental laws in California. And we beat them badly. <laughs> it was 62 to 38. So, I mean, this is going to be a repeat. It's, it's literally a sequel. The sad story is, is that, you know, Einstein said, that uh, if you do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, that's the definition of insanity. <laughs> and so I don't know why they're trying to do the same playbook again. Yeah. I mean, it works in Washington for them and worldwide, sure. but it never works in California. Yeah. 
especially when we have, you know, the governor, Jane Fonda, Arnold me, Schwarzenegger. and so many <laughs> yes. community leaders and uh, public servants come together. We have a great team together, and we're going to beat them again. And you're going to win, right? Oh, yeah. Great. We're going to, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to do everything yes. in our power. Th thank you very much for the time. It's great to see you, Governor. Pete, thank by you. the way, is fantastic. Yeah. Well, he's cute, he, too. No, but he always, <laughs> <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I mean, what am I, chop liver all of a sudden? Up next, California's Service Corps wants your help. Its leader, Josh Friday, is in studio. Stay with us. It's changed my life. Like, it's been a whole 360. Teresa, one of so many whose lives have been changed by participating in California's Service Corps programs. Now they're looking for new applicants. Joining us in studio to talk about it for the first time is Josh Friday, California's Chief Service Officer. We've talked so many times, we've never been in the house, so it's good to have you here. Welcome to The Issue Is. I feel like I'm home. Thank you, Alex. Uh, so what's the big announcement? The big announcement is that California is now recruiting over 10,000 paid positions with the California Service Corps, which is, as we've talked about, a effort that Governor Newsom launched to really unite and empower Californians through service. Talk to us about what you have been seeing and what are the different service opportunities. Yeah, we think we've really built something special here in California. Governor Newsom has invested in creating opportunities for people not just to have jobs, but to pay for school by serving in their community. And what we're seeing now that we have over 10,000 positions across the state of California is that it's having an impact on individuals. We're creating real economic opportunity to help pay for school and get a job. But we're also seeing the impact on the community. These 10,000 service members over the coming year are gonna serve nearly 5 million hours in our food banks, tutoring and mentoring our low-income students, we're taking climate action. So it's real meaningful work, and we're also preparing the next generation of California's workforce, our teachers, our nurses, our tradespeople. So we're seeing impact across the board. And so people can serve in a variety of ways, right? There's a climate core, which is focused on that. There's a service core. There's a college core that is focused on that. And now an AmeriCorps, too, on bigger service projects. Um, and this has become a national model. When President Biden came out and visited California, he walked with one of your fellows, along with Governor Newsom, talking about uh, this project. Process, and they've now done AmeriCorps as a national thing. We also have some video of Wes Moore, the governor of Maryland. Uh, he made this a model in Maryland, where they're now doing their own service corps. We also seen recently the governor of New York announce the creation of the Empire State Corps, modeled after the California College Corps model. And I think what it demonstrates is that Americans are hungry. They're hungry to be asked to be part of their community, to be able to contribute, to give back. And they're also tired of our divisive politics. They're tired of the polarization, and they want to do something positive on issues like climate change. So we're very encouraged by what we're seeing, and it's exciting that, that the model's here in California. Okay, so if I'm watching this and I want to do this, or I think you know my, my kid would be a great uh, person to do this, um, what do they do? What they do first is go to caservicecorps.com, our website. What we've done with the California Service Corps is create a model for almost anyone to serve. Young and old, no matter what background you have or experience, we need you. So go to our website, sign up, apply, and start getting paid to make a difference today. We need to get to know a little bit more about you. Okay. Uh, so on the issue is, we do this 30-second game called Personal Issues, uh, where we learn some of your personal favorites. Um, and so rapid fire, first thing that comes to mind. Uh, what is your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show, West Wing. Oh, great answer. Mine too. <laughs> favorite book? Uh, favorite book, Hatchet. Favorite sports team? San Francisco Giants, of course. All right, good luck with that. Uh, favorite <laughs> musical artist or band? I'm going to go with Metallica. Um, who is your role model? My role model is my parents, my mom and my dad, uh, and then also, of course, Sergeant Shriver. And what is the best way to relax? The best way to relax is going a very, very long run. And, and when you say long run, I mean, there's some people that think long run, we're talking about a few miles. How long are we talking? Uh, probably 40 to 50 miles is, is the long run range these days. I mean, you're an ultra marathoner, right? So that's not just like the regular 26. You're like, let's do twice that. I, like I said, it's a good way to get out there under the sun and relax. <laughs> How long does long. that take? <laughs> it's a full day. Uh, I'm not a fast runner, so it's a full day. Wow. 10 hours. 
Okay. Well, if, if you can get through that, I guess you can get through the service projects. That's true. <laughs> right? Exactly. And, all that and we're going to sign up more ultra runners. But yeah. first, we need you to sign up to serve. Okay. Uh, well, we, we love music on this show. So we're going to break with John Mayer's Waiting on the World to Change because I think programs like what you are doing is how we get the world to change, one person at a time, serving their community. Josh, I appreciate that. Thanks Alice. for the model. Great to see you. You too. More of the issue is right after this. Thank you to the people of the state of California for advancing this historic effort. Thank you all. Governor Gavin Newsom cheered on by various California leaders after California voters barely passed Proposition 1. It's a $6.3 billion bond that promises 11,000 inpatient beds for mental health treatment and 27,000 outpatient units. Polls in December showed that Prop 1 was expected to pass with over two-thirds of the vote. Newsom blanketed the airways with ads. But it passed with a less than 1% margin. So close, it took over two weeks to count. You all spent $16 million on this. The opposition spent $1,000. Yeah. Um, <laughs> clearly, uh, many voters were sending a message with their opposition to this. Yeah. What do you think the message they were sending is? Which is a recognition of the cynicism that's out there that, uh, that you know, just spending more money somehow is going to solve a problem. I share that cynicism. That's why this reform is a completely different uh, dynamic. Though in politics, a win is a win. Now the challenge, of course, implementing the policy. Prop 1, though, not the closest election in the state. For that, we head to the Bay Area, where Democrats Evan Lowe and Joe Simidian are battling for the final spot in a congressional race against Democrat Sam Licardo. At several points this week, Lowe and Simidian were separated by one vote. Yes, one vote. This one still too close to call. When we say every vote matters, we mean it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. The issue is, we'll see you next week.